Hi guys, Alan here, Solid Rock Bible Class. Hey, I am so glad you're with me. Hey, we're going to get going this morning, and the word of the day, it's favored. Favored. I looked it up in the dictionary just to see what they had to say, and it said preferred or, rec or recommended. So the question I really have is this. Do you feel favored? See, the thing we need to realize in our minds is, and don't forget that it's important that we have the right thought process, is the fact that Christians are highly favored. You say, well, you know something, I don't feel favored. Things just aren't going my way. Uh, you know, there's some things that uh, you need to do to take and really realize God's favor that he has on your life. It's so important here. If we look in Genesis, the sixth chapter, verse eight, and I'm gonna jump around a little bit here, but we're gonna settle in on something in a minute. But in Genesis six and eight, it says, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Now notice, Noah was a godly man. Things about him we're not doing well. He was living in a wicked world. I'm sure he was extremely persecuted. But it said, Noah found grace. He found preference. He found himself being favored in the eyes of the Lord. If we jump over into the book of Exodus, in Exodus 13:9, it says, And it shall be for a sign unto thee, Thine, thine hand, and, a, and for a memorial between thine eyes, that the Lord's law may be in thy mouth. For with a strong hand hath the Lord brought thee out of Egypt. Notice, God brought the people out of Egypt. He brought them out of bondage. Why? Because they were favored. If we look back into the book of Genesis, and I want us to look here at Joseph here just a little bit as we talk this morning. And I'm, gonna pick, I'm not going to read the entire passage. It'd be about 40, 50 verses we'd be looking at. But in Genesis 37, verse 4, it says, And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than his brethren, they hated him. And they could not speak peaceably unto him. And Joseph dreamed a dream. And he told it to his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. I always think of Joseph when it comes to being a favored person. Because he had such a rock and roll and up and down type of, of, of life. But when we really look at it in the long haul, God's hand was on it the entire time. The entire time that things were going poor for him, God had favor on him. And why did he do that, we'll see, is really because of the fact he stayed true to God. He stayed true praising God and worshiping God in his life. But notice God had an overall plan for Joseph's lives. It was Joseph's willingness to take and to communicate with God that made this whole thing possible. He could have had a really raunchy attitude about this. But no, God's going to bring it at some point all the way around to full circle for him. I think many times we're, we're kind of tempted to, to stop and, and, and we just, you know, things aren't going well and we don't talk to God. All of a sudden, finances, they're, they're not good. Or we've got a little bit of rocky road that's going someplace within the family. And we just say, where is God? I remember uh, so many people, you know, when it was talking, especially about the Vietnam War, they said, you know, there can't be a God. He wouldn't allow this. But everything has a plan. And as I say, many times people are they're tempted to stop. But that's when we really need to pour it on, isn't it? It's fellowship with God 
that we have that allows us to have things get better, to make it a better day, to understand where we're headed. So we need fellowship with other people. We also need fellowship, or uh, fe- we need fellowship with God, and we need fellowship with other people also. I think there's something here kind of important about Joseph's life. He went through some extremely fiery trials. First of all, he was extremely favored by his dad we was just looking at. Yet, his brothers absolutely hated him. They couldn't stand him. They called him a dreamer. They took and they threw him into a pit. Then they dug him out of that pit, sold him as a slave into Egypt. And he was sold off into a slave. Can you imagine what his thoughts were during this period of time of being sold off as a slave? Man, I would just, I would think you would just go into your shell and give up. But he was sold on an auction block. He was sold to to Potiphar. And Everything was going all of a sudden really well for him again. Things was looking very good. He wasn't at home, but he was in pretty good hands. He had a, a really a, a very good job until things went south with Potiphar's wife lying about him. And where did he end up? He ended up in prison. He ended up in prison. Terrible thing. Yet, again, God found favor with him in prison. As he found favor with him in prison, all of a sudden he found himself in charge of the prison. He's, he's a prisoner in charge of many people. He was there, and all of a sudden he interprets a dream for two of the um, workers of, of Pharaoh there. One of them, he says, well, you're going to die. And it happened. The other one, he says, you're going to be back at the king's side. And sure enough, that happened. He had asked him, he says, please don't forget me. Please don't forget me down here. But he did. But then one day, it was that dream that came to Pharaoh. And that dream that came to Pharaoh took and reminded his servant there that Joseph was there and he knew how to take an interpreted dream. All of a sudden he found favor with Pharaoh. All of a sudden he's promoted to being second in command of the entire nation. He saves the entire nation from a fatal famine. So you know, Joseph, he teaches us a lot of things. He teaches us about this fellowship with, with God. He teaches us about this good relations and fellowship that we have with other people, even when difficult situations are happening. Notice something, though, about this. Nothing happened right away. It was on God's timeline. It was a very slow timeline. And I think many times when we have that, when we're in that pressure cooker that's probably more like a crock pot and it's happening really slow, that there's a tendency to kind of take and withdraw from people and withdraw from God. And Joseph teaches us this value of staying in touch with other people. And then I think the other factor we really need to to remember here is the faithfulness. We see this in in Genesis, the 39th chapter, and I'm not going to read it, but verses 6 and verses 22. One of the most amazing samples of true faithfulness, I think, we find here. When Joseph took and he was faithful to God, he was thrown into prison. He was he a was slave. Yet he was faithful. See, 
the thing is that faithfulness was who God was to Joseph. And faithfulness is what God is toward us. It's not merely just to impress others that we're faithful. It's not even to impress God that we're faithful. It's just to follow God's word. Because we're not going to impress God, but we have favor with him. I think back just for a second here, and I think about Job. Job's going through all these difficulties within his life. He's lost everything he had. And he was, he was an extremely rich man. He lost it all. But in Job 13, 15, he says, Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. That's just, boy, that's, uh, that is a bold hard statement. That's a hard place to come from. But notice this full circle that happens with Joseph. Notice this full circle. It's God's plan for this to happen. All of these bad things, it was all planned for this to happen. Because not only did he save those of Egypt, but he turns around and he saves the life of his family, his father, his brothers who hated him, who turned to love him later on. You know, Jeremiah, he knew plenty of things in regards to the, the crushing blows of things that could happen in, in terrible situations. Um, and Joseph, and we look at Job, and there's, you know, so many of these Bible characters that lived that really explain things here to us. There's another aspect here we see kind of in, in, uh, in regards to Joseph. We see this later on in his life uh, as far as when his brothers come to take and, uh, and get food from Egypt and had no idea they was asking it from, from, from Joseph. Here we see Joseph had this opportunity to pay them back. He could have paid them evil for evil. He could have done it very well. His dad would have absolutely never knew about it. But without doubt, his brothers that had sold him into slavery, they, you know, they didn't have any compassion on him. Why should he have any compassion on them? They wanted him dead. They just found a more profitable way to do it. So all he had to do was say the word and they would have been tortured or they would have been killed or whatever he asked for. But what came out of Joseph? Forgiveness came out of Joseph. Why? Because he was faithful to God. So in the midst of problems, in the midst of trouble, Keep yourself open to fellowship with God. Keep yourself open to fellowship with others. Remain faithful. Choose this heart of forgiveness. Because you know what it'll do? It'll actually find you peace in your life. Another person that just kind of pops to mind here in regards to favor with God is is when we see Ruth and Naomi and and the way that the kinsman redeemer stepped in and I don't have time to really get into that but he found but they went gleaning in the fields just trying to get enough to eat and all of a sudden he made it much easier for him and later on of course it turned into quite the love story See, God is not partial to any single one person. We all have the favor of God. In Deuteronomy, the 10th chapter, verse 17, it says, For the Lord your God is a God of gods and a Lord of lords, and a great God, a mighty and terrible, 
which regardeth not persons. He doesn't regard people. When we look into the New Testament, we see Peter. And it says, when Peter opened his mouth and said of, of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. We are favored. Have you ever thought about, you know, boy, I had a really good break there. No, you didn't. You had the favor of God. You may look at somebody and say, look at that. Everything they touch, it turns into gold. Everything they do, it turns out so perfect. They have God's favor, but I don't. No, that's not true. You have God's favor. Again, in Romans, the second chapter, verse 11, it says, for there is no respecter of persons with God. But then we look in the book of, of Colossians, and it says, But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he has done. And then he goes on and he says, For there is no respecter of persons. You say, I don't feel favored. Do you thank God for where you are at the time you're there? Do you thank God for it? Do you thank God for where he's taking you even though you can't see it do you thank God when you just don't have enough resources but he's given you something do you just say Lord thank you for what you gave me today see we need to live this expectant life and we've talked about expectant lives way back in the past but what are your expectations? I'm not trying to say, hey, think it and claim it or believe it and claim it or anything like that. But a lot of it does have to do with our attitude. We need to look for the blessings of God. Look hard for the blessings of God. Remember the fact he's got a journey. He's not finished with you yet. See, we should not be blind to these blessings that he has there for us. Thank God for his blessings, even when they aren't totally sufficient. Because, remember, you are favored with God because of your relationship. You are a son and you are a daughter of the Most High God. Thank you for being with me today. We'll catch up a little bit later.